This abandoned ghost town was once underneath over 60 feet of water. Today, I'm gonna explore the town and tell you the history of St. Thomas. The trail to get down to the ghost town is a two and a half, I think, mile loop. Um, and it is, oh, <laughs> it is not a stable ground at all. This trail is not maintained, so you really have to go slow. We're not too far down the hike at all, but just looking at the ground now, I can already see shells everywhere. So you can see these shells here, proof that the water level used to go up even higher than where we are now. St. Thomas was initially founded in January of 1865 by Mormon settlers. Uh, they were sent here by Brigham Young to um, continue their religious mission. So he sent a small group of people out to establish a township out here in the middle of the desert. They intended the area to be um, a middle ground between Salt Lake City and LA for travelers to stop and be able to replenish supplies and rest. The town was named after one of its earliest inhabitants, a Mr. Thomas Smith. And at one point it had over 45 families living here. Everything was going pretty well. However, there was a slight flaw in their plan. At some point they found out that they weren't actually in Utah. I guess they thought they were in Utah the whole time. I guess land boundaries were a little bit more confusing back then. So they find out that they're not in Utah and they're actually in the state of Nevada. When they realize they're not actually in Utah, they also find out that the county is asking for back taxes for all the time that the town has been there, which at that point was about five years. And since taxes had to be paid in gold, the town basically had a decision to make. Do we figure out how to pay these taxes or do we abandon what we've built so far? So the people in the town went back to Brigham Young and they were like, yo, what do we do? He said the town could vote and if they did vote to leave that he would release them from their mission. Basically like contract, null and void, no worries, no harm, no foul, get out, right? By 1880, people started to make their way back into the town and it started to grow again. A huge impact to the town came in 1912 when they even got a railroad. So that meant more people passing through and more people living here. So things in the town are going pretty well. The town is growing and at one point it had over 500 residents. But unfortunately, fate was not gonna be kind to the township of St. Thomas. The residents were informed by government officials that they planned to construct a dam. Now we of course know this is the Hoover Dam, but that it was going to flood this entire area. So all of the land that you see, this entire basin, this whole valley, was going to be underwater, including the entire town of St. Thomas. In 1928, President Coolidge signed a bill authorizing the beginning of the construction for the Hoover Dam. Government officials came to the town and let the residents know that this entire area was going to be under 60 to 70 feet of water and that they needed to leave their homes. September 30th, 1935, President Roosevelt officially dedicated the dam. The residents were given what the government considered fair market value for their property and one by one, the families started to leave the area. It did take about five years for the water to completely reach the town and fully submerge the entire thing. St. Thomas officially ceased to exist as a town on June 11, 1938. That's when the post office closed and it was no longer a town. The water levels in Lake Mead have been dropping more and more and more over the last few decades. And the town of St. Thomas has peaked out from the water several times before. But at this point, the water levels have dropped so much that the entire town and the entire valley around it are completely dry. It's so crazy to think about how much people were like rooted here. People had been here for generations, raising families, you know, farming, all that stuff. And then just one day they get told they have to leave. And then they find out their whole town is gonna be underwater. That's so nuts. Okay, also, let me just point out another thing. I say like, oh, that's so wild. Like, can you imagine someone just showing up to you and your family on land you've lived on for generations and generations and then just had them be like, nope, this is ours now, you gotta go. But isn't that like exactly what they did to the First Nations people that lived here already when, when they first got here? So I'm not saying it was like, you know, necessarily karma for them to get kicked off the land. But... Also, while
while we're telling the story, quick shout out to Land Glasses for sending me these sweet aviators that I got. Um, I know you all see me wear glasses in like all the videos, but I don't know if you've noticed, but I was always noticing there's always like a glare on my lenses from like the sun because we always do these like outdoor videos. So they uh, sent me these ones and they also sent me some really cool blue light blocking ones for when I'm editing. So I'll show you all that one on another one, but they really came in handy today. Look at this view, freaking gorgeous. Okay, back to the story. It's one of my favorite things about the videos that we do on this channel is telling stories like this. Like I didn't even know about this place until one of you all mentioned it to me in a comment and said, hey, go out and find this place and um, check it out. So thank you. So if you have any more things like that, if you have other places like this that you think would fit for a video, let me know, comment. And that is the story of St. Thomas, the once underwater ghost town. Thanks everybody, I appreciate each of you and I'll see you next time.